Hello, my friends. It's Deborah Poneman, founder of Yes to Success Seminars and Ageless, anti-aging for your brain, body, and future. And thank you for all the positive feedback about last week's blog on staying hydrated. I was so blown away by your response, thinking that it was such an unusual topic, but you can't argue with success. <laughs> so I thought I'd offer another blog this week with another dietary suggestion guaranteed to lead to vibrant health and long life with a clear brain and radiant skin and energy to spare. And I chose this to share with you because almost more than any other substance, what I'm about to tell you causes brain inflammation, which according to recent research done at the University of Cambridge, may be more widely implicated in dementia than was previously thought. And that substance is, if you didn't guess it, drum roll please, white sugar. Yes, most of us said it together. A diet high in white sugar, which by the way, sorry, includes not only your run of the mill uh, donuts and um, candy and cookies and cake and Coke, all of the C's. Maybe we should just stay away from C words and the like, but also wine and anything that acts like white sugar in your body, which includes carbs like white pasta. In fact, all refined white flour, tortillas, pita bread, um, Wonder Bread, 99% <laughs> of breakfast cereals, any processed grains. In the brain, this inflammation slows down communication between your brain neurons. And this is what causes you to feel dull and foggy and you can't remember things. Furthermore, brain inflammation is serious because it means nerve cells in the brain are dying because if you're constantly bombarding your brain, then the brain cells begin to die off. In other words, brain inflammation is causing your brain to atrophy and age too fast. And inflammation plays a significant role in Alzheimer's as well as many other degenerative illnesses, including cardiovascular disease and diabetes and arthritis and osteoporosis, some cancers, um, as well as weight gain and depression. And now, obviously, this is not something you want in your diet if you don't want any of the above. So how do we begin to wean ourselves of this substance, which is everywhere? Well, first, you have to know yourself. If you're like me, you have trouble weaning yourself slowly. I can't eat treats in moderation. I'm one of those people who has to go cold turkey, okay? One taste and it's all over. Ask my friends and family. I say, okay, well, I'll just have a little tiny taste of the cake. And then I go back for another tiny taste and then another tiny taste. How many of you are like me? Raise your hand, even though I can't see you. And then another until I've eaten half of the cake. So I have to either do it cold turkey or not, because if I violate, it's over for me. So again, if you're like me, the only way to begin is to just stop. Done, fini, and instead satisfy your sweet tooth at the beginning with some less harmful sweeteners. By the way, I just realized today's what, January 13th? I just realized that um, I gave up white sugar almost exactly this is 2024, almost exactly five years ago to the day. It was on my cousin Marsha's birthday, which was um, January 3rd. I just had a piece of cake and that was it. <laughs> so happy anniversary to me. Anyway, you can start out with some less harmful sweeteners like coconut palm sugar, not just coconut sugar, but coconut palm sugar or date sugar or monk fruit, just look at the package and make sure the monk fruit doesn't have erythritol in it, which is usually the first ingredient. If you have monk fruit in your house and you go look at the back of monk fruit, you'll see erythritol is the first ingredient. And that's a harmful sugar alcohol. It's made in the lab and it also causes inflammation. Or you can use stevia. Just make sure the stevia is organic and it's not like Truvia or Purvia, which are chemical-filled products that are put out by the Coca-Cola and Pep PepsiCo companies, respectively. Even maple syrup or honey are better at the beginning when you're weaning yourself. 
but you'll want to slowly even wean yourself off of those since they have high glycemic indexes in, and uh, can cause some brain inflammation, but not nearly as much as white sugar. Or better yet, after you, you know, maybe do a little bit of the maple syrup and, and monk fruit. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with having monk fruit once in a while, but better yet, then start eating um, dried fruit, like have a couple dates to satisfy your sweet tooth or a small little bunch of raisins or sweet, fresh fruit like bananas or grapes. I love bananas and grapes frozen in the summer. I put grapes in a baggie and I freeze them and I cut up my bananas in like little chunks. And when I'm having a sweet craving for sweets, I just go to the freezer and it's delicious. Um, and they also provide much needed fiber. And these days you don't have to worry about your kids not having treats. There are literally thousands of sweet treats that you can get at the health food store for your kids. My kids, because they're now 35 and 32, and actually they didn't have white sugar their their entire entire childhood. Instead, they start until they started going to like birthday parties. Well, they grew up in a community, a meditation community in Fairfield, Iowa, and all of the parents are were of like mind. But then when we moved to Evanston, and there are the big old sugary cakes. Uh, I didn't want to be the mean mommy. So if they need a, a piece of cake, that was okay. But at our home, we only, I even made their birthday cakes um, with sweetened with stevia or fruit juice or applesauce or mashed bananas. I even had a fabulous recipe that sweetened their birthday cakes. I know this is going to sound weird with sweet potato. <laughs> And I'm telling you, their friends didn't know the difference. They went back for seconds and thirds. And again, you could get so many yummy treats at the local health food store or online, sweetened with fruit juice or dates or make them yourself. Um, once your craving for sugar is less, then you'll want to even reduce your intake, like I say, of like dried fruit to a few pieces a day and substitute things like nuts and less sweet fruit. And the crazy thing is that you'll start thinking that nuts are sweet. I just actually had some cashews and I eat the cashews and to me, they taste sweet as sugar because once your taste buds stop being bombarded by white sugar that dull the, the taste buds, then even nuts taste sweet. And if you're not a cold turkey kind of a guy or gal, then gradually decreasing your sugar consumption week by week might work for you. Like week one, just notice ways to cut back. Like instead of getting a um, Danish or a donut with your Starbucks, get a croissant. Instead of putting sugar, put some stevia in. I mean, I know a croissant is refined white flour, but I'm saying it's a start wean yourself, start doing things like putting bananas and raisins and just a touch of maple syrup on your oatmeal instead of three tablespoons of brown sugar. Brown sugar is just white refined sugar with a little bit of molasses left in. So a sugar in the raw to make you think that it's healthier for you. It's not. And um, don't eat sweetened yogurt, but instead get plain yogurt. And I'm really not big on dairy. So uh, I recommend coconut milk yogurt or cashew yogurt. And just add a small bit of stevia or monk fruit or coconut palm sugar or date sugar for sweetness. I sweeten my cashew yogurt with 100% fruit strawberry jam. So you go to the health food store, you get 100% uh, fruit blueberry jam or strawberry jam and put a spoonful in your yogurt, mix it up, and you'll think it's as good as Dannon's. <laughs> but do not substitute artificial sweeteners like Equal or Splenda for your, for your white sugar. They come with a host of their own problems, including, including inflammation, but also things that are worse than what refined white sugar does to you. In fact, um, they not only dull your taste buds, things like aspartame for sure, but they make you, are you ready for this? Crave more sweets. And that's even the least of your worries with those artificial poisons like aspartame. Just for example, um, uh, sucralose, commonly referred to as Splenda, is a sugar from which some naturally occurring matter is removed and swapped out for chlorine, I swear. 
So while it tastes sweet, the body doesn't recognize it. So it doesn't attempt to break it down. So it has zero calories, but because the body doesn't recognize it and sees it as a foreign invader, it activates the immune system and causes inflammation. Not to mention that artificial sweeteners like aspartame, which are sold under the names like NutraSweet and Equal, were documented way before they were released into the marketplace to be linked to breast cancer and liver cancer and colon cancer. Numerous studies also documented increased um, incidence of fibromyalgia, multiple sclerosis, migraine headaches, menstrual problems, infertility in laboratory animals that consume these artificial sweeteners. A word to the wise. And also, by the way, don't give them to your kids. Research has also shown that that um, children who uh, eat artificial sweeteners have a lack of ability to concentrate and even changes in their behavior, like more aggression and more anger. And if after a while you're still having sugar cravings, then you might need more protein in your diet. So if you have a sugar craving, grab some protein instead, like make a shake with stevia sweetened protein powder, or I know this is going to sound funny, or a hard boiled egg, or a small handful of raw, organic, unsalted nuts sprouted is the best. I mean, I know a hard boiled egg isn't exactly a Snickers, but it doesn't cause brain inflammation either. And by the way, there there is a... Um, a brand of treats called uh, Choc Zero, C-H-O-C Zero, Choc Zero. And um, they have something that does taste like Snickers. It's called a Rhea Bar, R-H-E-A, and it's sweetened with monk fruit. All right. And also, if you still continue to crave uh, sugar, be sure to eat regular meals. And again, protein at every meal because it keeps blood sugar stable and it's the most satisfying micro, uh, macronutrient. So we don't crave sweets uh, and it's most important at breakfast. So have some protein at breakfast and be sure to take good supplements. Nutrient deficiencies can make cravings worse. And there are certain, certain nutrients that seem to improve blood sugar control and reduce cravings like um, chromium is one, B3, uh, magnesium. I think those are the three best. And as you begin to detox from sugar, because it is a toxic drug, as a matter of fact, in laboratory studies, mice chose it over heroin, just saying, but you might find you have a headache for a day or two or other symptoms of detoxing uh, when you go off of sugar, like fatigue. Some people even get sores in their mouth when they go off of sugar. Not to scare you, but what you want to do is drink lots and lots of water to flush out the toxins from your system, which is one of the things I talked about last week, um, about one of the wonderful things about drinking water is that it helps flush toxins out of your system. And remember what else I said last week, if you drink sugary drinks or worse yet, things like Coke Zero or Diet Pepsi sweetened with aspartame, you'll want to start substituting water. And thank you to Laura Daly, who shared in the comments from last week's Success Saturday that there is now, remember I went off on vitamin water because it has as much sugar in it as a Coke. Well, she told me that there is a new line of vitamin water that's sweetened with monk fruit and stevia. And sure enough, I looked online, I looked at the ingredients and voila, and they have lots of great flavors like coconut lime or raspberry chocolate. I mean, I still stick with good old water, fresh spring water being the best, but you know, when you need a little tasty treat once in a while, thank you, Laura, for that heads up on monk fruit and stevia sweetened um, vitamin water. Oh, and for those who are having a hard time weaning themselves from sugary soda, like the wonderful uh, Gianna, who vowed in the comments in my last Success Saturday to give up her beloved Dr. Pepper. And then I told her she doesn't even have to because there is a brand of soda called Zevia, Z-E-V-I-A, that you can get at any health food store. And they have Coke and Dr. Pepper, although it's called Dr. Zevia, and cream soda and ginger ale and grape soda, all sweetened with stevia. So this is not going to be as hard as you thought. And one last thing to take temptation out of your life, you can do what I do. 
Everyone who comes in my home knows that it is what I call a sugar-free zone. And I ask them not to bring any sugary treats into my home. If it's somebody's birthday and we have a party and they want a sugary cake and ice cream, fine, bring it. It's their birthday and I'm not going to push my beliefs on them, but they have to take it home with them when they leave. So there's no temptation. I mean, I admit it. I don't have great self-control. Wait, cancel. I used to not have great self-control, but it's getting better and better all the time. But until I'm at 100%, why tempt fate? And uh, so if somebody brings a big old thing of ice cream, sweetened with sugar, they take it home with them. So I think that's about it for today. So good luck. I'm rooting for you. And you know, after the couple days of detoxing, notice not only does your mind wake up, you'll start seeing the, the world differently when you go off of sugar. You'll start seeing colors more vibrantly. Um, your skin, the texture and softness completely changes. Wrinkles even diminish. I'm telling you, dark circles under your eyes disappear. So hello, mental clarity, good memory, radiant skin, more strength, more stamina, sugar zaps, all those things from you. And um, so you are just going to love all of the glorious benefits of a sugar-free life. Um, I'm not going to say it will be a, <laughs> ironically, a cakewalk to go off of sugar, but I will say it will be worth it. And I'm just thinking next time, next week, I think I'm going to give you a few more tips on remaining ageless with my 72nd birthday a couple weeks away. But going off of white sugar is definitely one of my top five keys to being ageless. So I'm going to give you some more next week in honor of my birthday. Anyway, have a great week. Like I say, I'm rooting for you. You can do this thing. See you next week. Love you all. Bye for now.